happy equinox. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, happy spring equinox, first day of spring. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, happy fall equinox, first day of autumn. These are the days in between the midpoints of the shortest day and the longest day, where the light and the darkness balance, where however dark it gets in the darkest days of winter, however light it gets in the brightest days of summer, right now we are balanced in the middle. As we reflect on courage this month, Balance is an important thing to think about because we're all balancing courage with other parts of our lives. We're all balancing those courageous moments when we speak or act with the moments when we let fear have the final word. And we wouldn't be human if we weren't somehow in that balance. Balance is tricky, especially when it comes to figuring out how to live ethically in a world that is so out of balance with regards to the environment, with regards to how we treat one another and our systemic violence towards some people on the planet who are somehow seen as less than. And we all find our place in this balance of privilege and oppression. Very few of us privileged in every way but most of us holding some kinds of privilege. So how do we balance? How do we find balance in this world? When Gia was three or four, I used to work in Washington, D.C., around the corner from a large statue honoring Mahatma Gandhi. And I took Gia to see this because it was a beautiful statue. People would come and every day there would be fresh marigolds at the feet of this statue. And I often would go over there and sit on a bench for lunch. It was just a beautiful little place. So Gia and I went over and I told Gia, this was this great, courageous man who led the people of India to freedom and stood up to the British powers of oppression. And Gia, always cutting to the chase, said, how did he die? How did he die? There was a question I didn't want to answer, but I said, someone killed him. And Gia said, why did someone kill him? And I thought about it and Gia already knew some stories of other very courageous people who'd been killed. And I, I tied this story to those. I said, well, do you remember how I told you about Jesus and Jesus got killed and, and about Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King got killed. And really it was because Putting this in the language I thought three-year-olds would understand, I said, it was because other people were jealous because Gandhi and King and Jesus were closer to God than they were and other people were jealous because they wanted to be closer to God and so they killed them. And Gia thought for a moment and said, I don't think I want to be that close to God. All of us, as we try to find balance, are looking for a place where we are close enough to our holy purpose on this planet that we feel alive, but also most of us don't want to be that close to God, right? And when we lift up those models of what courage looks like, they're kind of guaranteed to make us say, oh, I don't want to have that much courage, thank you so much. So what we're trying to do here is balance, is talk about the balance that most of us live with. And one of the ways that I think we can work towards balance is by resetting what we've accepted as the balance. Because we live in places where truth and lies, justice and injustice, human kindness are very distorted. And so when we try to come into balance with our own hearts longing, it can be hard to figure out where that balance lives. So here are a couple of ideas that I have had from my life finding more courage. Right now, I'm engaged in an experiment about breaking silence. Later in this service, you're gonna see a TED Talk by a guy named Zha Zhang, and he embarked in something called rejection therapy where every day he decided to ask for something the answer to which would almost definitely be no. He asked for outrageous things. 
So I watched some of his videos and I was inspired to try this myself. Rejection therapy, a way to get over the fear of being rejected if we break silences, if we break boundaries of what's acceptable. So I've been trying this and I'm going to continue and I hope you'll try it too because it's kind of fun and kind of interesting to simply ask for things where you fully expect the other person to say no and to get desensitized to our terror that we might say something wrong. As a white middle class woman, I am so trained that I should never upset anyone. And this is a great way to come into balance with a different way to be with my own voice. So here are some of the things that I've tried. I was in a shopping mall food court eating and I said to the server, is there a valet service here? She said, no. I was in a restaurant and I said, do you have desserts that you set on fire? And she said, no. And I said, well, would you just set a piece of cake on fire for me? And she said, no. I was in a large store and there was a woman with a toddler running beside her. And I said, wanna put your toddler in my cart? And she said, looking a little horrified, no. It's fun to break the silences, to break the barriers. For me, as a white middle-class woman, Zha Zhang himself emigrated from China and I'm inspired to see some of the silences that he's broken that put him in some amount of danger sometimes. Going to a McMansion where a white man lives and saying, can I play soccer in your backyard? And the man said, okay. So there are different boundaries that we set for ourselves where we say safety ends here. And I suggest that to come back to balance, we try. For some of us, it may be the opposite. For some of us, it may be getting very quiet in conversations where we would typically be the one pushing the boundaries. For us, the act of courage may be to come way back and simply be quiet. For some of us, it may be to declare, I'm only going to go places where I feel supported and I don't feel supported at your house. So for now, I'm not coming there. Whatever it looks like for you to set a new boundary just to see what happens, I encourage you to do it and we will be there for each other. So at this time when the earth is in balance, I invite you to join with that energy and seek a new balance yourself. What have you got to lose?